Hello, Padawans. It's Meal Near Monday, May 6th. I hope everyone had an awesome May the 4th be with you in Cinco de Mayo. It's now time for your weekly thunder. So while my head was stuck in Endgame, I forgot to mention that there was a big old battle at Winterfell that weekend on Game of Thrones, and there were a lot of deaths. <clears throat> I think. Most of that battle was so freaking dark, and there were camera cuts so quick, it was like a Paul W.S. Anderson movie. But it was quite epic, an epic episode, though, for real. We're halfway through this final season. It's been quite the journey. Can't wait to see where they go from here. Also, Mortal Kombat 11 came out the Tuesday leading up to Endgame of Thrones weekend. And NetherRealm Studios does it again with a badass video game with a wonderful cinematic story mode. Seriously, who needs a Mortal Kombat live-action movie anymore when we've got the games with story modes of this standard? I figured I'd start this episode with Thrones and Combat because I slacked last episode, and like my good friend in history, comic book so sweetly said, Mortal Kombat 11, Avengers Endgame, and the Battle of, Battle of Winterfell happened. It's a great week to be a geek. Couldn't agree more, sir. Some sad news to start out things. Peter Mayhew, known for playing Chewbacca in the original Star Wars trilogy, along with Revenge of the Sith and The Force Awakens, passed away Thursday at his home in North Texas. He was 74. Mayhew was discovered and cast as Chewbacca when he was an orderly at King's College Hospital's radiology department. And he was reportedly told that all he had to do to be cast was to stand up. At seven foot three, what else do you need? When I was heading home from Borderlands because free comic book day Saturday morning, I saw the LED billboard by the quick trip on the corner of Woodruff and Verde with the slide of Chewie's fur and sash in the background of one message. May he rest in peace. I really gotta thank whoever's in charge of the LED billboards on Woodruff Road because they have some super classy RIP billboards. They've done them for Carrie Fisher, Stan Lee, and I think even Steve Ditko too. Woodruff may have a lot of negative attached to it, but they're certainly good too. Which is one of the reasons I came back. The latter matches for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view got a little more fleshed out as the Raw side of the men's and women's matches were announced on a moment of list, with the men being Braun Strowman, Ricochet, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre. It ended with a tag match that had Ricochet doing the 630 on Corbin and McIntyre walking out on Corbin. Ha 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 ha. Guess the Legion of Douche is done now that the Shield is retired. Thank Odin. Corbin's a great villain, but that faction was beat over our heads way too many times. Later on a moment of bliss, host Alexa Bliss announced the women's side would be Natalia, Dana Brooke, odd, and Naomi, while they were boasting and bickering amongst themselves that they would win and cash in and be champion. Alexa preached to them about being fair to the women's division they come from because there's a woman out there waiting to hear if she'll be invited to compete in this opportunity. Then she announced the final woman, herself! Yeah, you already know I marked out for that. So excited. Urgh. If you remember, at last year's Money in the Bank, she won that contract, then cashed it in later that evening on the Raw Women's Championship that was between Nia Jax and Ronda Rousey, and that's when she won her third Raw Women's title. They say lightning doesn't strike the same place twice, but I'm Sexy Thor and I say it does. I can't save her from the shoelaces on Converses, though. I wear the exact same kind, and even I fall victim to those laces coming undone at the drop of a hat. The SmackDown Money in the Bank entrants were announced in a less blissful fashion. On the women's side will be Bailey, Ember Moon, Mandy Rose, and Carmella, while the men's side will be Ali, the Intercontinental Champion Finn Balor, Randy Orton, and Andrade. Lots of previous winners on this roster, but lots of new opportunities here too. Just when we thought Miz vs. Shane McMahon was over after the superstar shakeup, silly me, turns out Shane is just pulling double duty by on top of punishing Roman Reigns for punching his dad, continuing to antagonize the Miz, whose dad Shane infamously manhandled at Fastlane. Instead of false count anywhere, the stipulations are the exact opposite. The two of them inside a steel cage at Money in the Bank. The next one at Money in the Bank technically qualifies as, as a championship match, but this is also a grudge match like no other as it's Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens for the WWE Championship. A couple weeks back, Kevin Owens was inducted into the New Day as an honorary member while Big E was out with injury, and Owens was christened as Big O. 
Then the following week, when Kofi had a singles match against Shinsuke Nakamura, Rusev stepped in to attack Kofi and end the match on disqualification. Big O stepped in to fend off Rusev. Then when Nakamura went after Big O, Kofi pushed him out of the way and dispatched Nakamura, then got kicked by Big O. This was Kevin Owens going back to his old heel ways and told Kofi and Xavier in a very rough way that he wanted a WWE Championship opportunity. And Kofi was definitely happy to give it to him either way. Owens powerbombed Xavier on the edge of the ring and banged him up pretty bad. So last week when Kofi called him out and KO was taunting him, Xavier tried to ambush KO but was too banged up to make some sort of impact. Later in the episode, during the KO show segment, Xavier Woods was supposed to guest but never showed so he mocked them with Xavier and Biggie action figures. So Kofi came out and attacked KO to end the show. Marvel announced on Wednesday a deal with Hulu to make two new shows for Ghost Rider and Hellstrom. Gabriel Luna is set to reprise his role as Robbie Reyes, the present-day Ghost Rider, who he played on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a couple years ago. Speaking of which, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6 premieres this Friday, May 10th. And speaking of upcoming television, just another reminder that the long-awaited fourth season of Lucifer, the same wonderful show that Fox canceled not called Firefly, will finally drop on Netflix this Wednesday, May 8th. Maybe sometime between binging Lucifer and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. returning, you can watch Detective Pikachu, which also comes out this weekend. I'm sure you can pull yourself away from one more viewing of Avengers Endgame to watch this, and it'll be well worth it. Maybe that last sentence wasn't me talking to you, but talking to myself. Who knows? On a final note, I'll just let you know that as of yesterday, Endgame passed 2.18 billion. Gah. On that note, on that note, that's your weekly thunder for Monday, May 6th. I'm Sexy Thor. Remember to Drink, fight, eat, and I guess go watch Endgame yet again. But remember, watch Detective Pikachu first. That's going to be amazing.